welcome everybody. My name is François Latelf and this is my channel JDR T30, a, a channel about tabletop role playing games. Today I'm going to do a review of a game, uh, a game system. The game system is called Legend. It's a game system that is published by Mongo's Publishing. Uh, I did want to make a review of it because uh, I came to, to use it uh, last year. I had a couple of months uh, playing this game, running this game for a group. Uh, and uh, I, I saw on the, the YouTube that there wasn't much uh, review of it. There's one review actually from uh, Game Geeks, uh, Kurt Weasel. That, and by the way, the, the link is below. Uh, but the, I, I feel that he didn't really try it. Me, I've tried it, and I think that that game deserves uh, to be talked about because it's a very good game system for fantasy. So uh, I will do, you know, kind of a small run through of the game and tell you uh, what I think of it. Uh, first of all, Legend. Uh, this game is a percentile based, uh, and it's very close to the. Uh, Chaosium uh, basic role playing system, the, the same system that is used in the game the Call of Duty. It's a very near cousin, and there's reasons to that. Legend, it's kind of the latest version of RuneQuest, the way I understand it. it RuneQuest, uh, it's a game from the 70s, and it was the first one with a, a, a percentile based, uh, the way basic role playing does it. And after that, uh, Chaosium, which does the basic role playing, uh, it came with other games using the same system. But RuneQuest uh, was tied to a, a setting called Glorenta, and uh, and it came in the end of, in the hand of other publishers and uh, got you know its own life uh, uh, apart from the basic role playing and the Chaosium. Uh, so uh, we're kind of 35 years later almost and uh, the both games basic role playing and legend have much in common but there are a big difference so uh, the game you are uh, okay it begins with the, the the character creation the way it works uh, well when i did characters I felt that it was kind of mm, some inspiration from D20. No, it's, it's not like D20, but you have to choose a, a cultural background and a profession that came with some array of skills that you put on your character. So you see, for example, you choose that you are a barbarian, so you have some, ki so, some, uh, some skills that are related to that. And after that, you, you choose a profession. It may be an acrobat, maybe a soldier. And again, you, you add some more skills to that. And by the end, you, you can freely uh, put the skill points uh, into your character sheets yeah, after you have chosen what your character will be. Um, if I compare with basic role playing, uh, well, it's a little more restrictive, but if you want to do uh, so that kind of, uh, of profession, uh, well, your character will be uh, much like what it should. <laughs> the, the skills will, will go with that. When you create a character, you have, uh, like basic role playing, damage modifier, uh, adding strength plus size. Uh, the skills, the basic percentage of the skills are uh, often uh, it's by adding two uh, main attributes. Uh, let's say uh, a skill like uh, if I take one, I think uh, okay, uh, like dance, dancing. It's dexterity plus plus charisma. You you add both scores and it gives you the basic stat for this skill. Uh, in basic role-playing games and Call of Tulu, uh, the, the basic uh, percentage are already there. You, whenever your character is smart or strong or, or you know, not smart, not strong, you will have, uh, I think, 20% dodge, whatever. So 
So, so I like the, the way Legend puts that. So the, you, every character will have some difference in their starting percentile, so the starting scores in their skills. After that, you you yeah you determine your 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 basic damage, and after that, uh, the, the the hit point it's a hit location system. You have hit points for your legs, your arm, your head, and uh, I really like the way they do it, uh, the way it, uh, it it's put. And I can tell you, uh, combats here are very deadly. It's very dangerous to fight. I will tell you about it in some moments. And yeah, there, there are things like your family and your contacts and all the backgrounds. You can have tables to 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 help you uh, to get what was in your background, or you, you or you can come out with anything you like. After that, the game system is quite similar to uh, to the basic role playing. So you have a score, you roll. Percentile, percentile, and you have to to uh, get equal or less than the score to succeed an action. Uh, the, there are critical. Uh, you, you can get a critical roll by rolling very very low or fumble if you roll too high. And um, and the, something different from the basic role playing is when you do opposed roles. Uh, in basic role playing, you have some kind of a table that determines how you oppose your roles, and not there. I like the way they they, they do that. The way they, they they deal with it is that both uh, parties roll uh, their their respective skills, and if both succeeds, well, to determine who's the winner of the contest. It will be the one who actually actually rolled higher on his uh, dice. Let's say uh, we're doing uh, the, the, someone searching. Someone is hidden, and uh, another uh, character is searching for him. So uh, the, the one searching may may have let's say 70% in searching, and the one hiding may may have 50%. Both roll their skills. The one, uh, the one searching, maybe rolled, uh, let's say, 21, and the one hiding uh, rolled like 48. Well, the one who's hiding has won the contest, and is the one who who uh, will not be spot. So I, I did like that. After that, uh, in the, this book, you have the skills that are fully explained uh, and uh, yeah they, they explain how, how to improve the character I'd like to talk about it because I really like the way they do it in basic role playing and here I didn't even really understood how they do it I, I felt that it was a little complicated personally if I had to do this game on the long term probably I, I, I will I should do it the, the, the BRP way yeah, personally, it's my opinion. And combat, combat is very deadly here. And uh, there's some, uh, th there's something I'd like to, to tell you about combat. I'm flipping through the book, and uh, the, that the main difference I found out uh, here versus basic role playing. Combats here are very deadly. You, the, the way I ran it. It was very rare that the combat would have lasted more than three rounds, and uh, it was very dangerous. Um, it's almost realistic because uh, if you 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 hit someone on his head, uh, well, he will be probably down on the first strike. Um, combat here, uh, the way it works. Is that when you roll, uh, it's kind of an opposed roll in some way, and uh, how good you did roll will tell you how how much special moves you can do. You have to roll, and after that, decide what what is the effect of what you you are doing. For example, you roll very high, and you can have 
can you can make two special moves. Uh, well, basically, you do damage, but you can choose to do maximum damage. So you don't roll the dice; you do maximum damage. And uh, the other other special move may be hit location. So you choose where you hit. That's where it's very deadly. That's good, because you can choose to hit the head. And every weapon, I, I guess, every weapon can allow it, because weapons comes with with their own special moves. Uh, so you can choose the special moves from the weapon itself, and uh, yeah, and if in a combat, let's say close combat, uh, the the one who's defending really roll well, well, he's the one to get some special moves. Of course, he won't damage his opponent since he won't, didn't hit him, but by he can make so much a good defense that uh, he can make a special move to disarm his opponent or trip him so even when you're defending uh, you're kind of in action so i really like the way combat is ran here it's a little complicated but my feeling about that is that maybe i didn't play it uh, long enough to get it fluid by the end of the time i've ran it uh, it was almost uh, fluid, but you ha we had to stop the campaign, unfortunately. Uh, but the, the, this combat system, it, it frankly it took me a while to, to really get it, because we're used to the D&D &D, uh, kind of D&D &D, uh, model, where you, you roll to it, and yeah, you, you say before rolling what you, you will do, but here... You can tell before what you want to do, but the thing is, is uh, how good you will roll will tell you how what you can do, and sometimes you can do more than you were expecting. So it can, you know, it can uh, do a major turnbacks in the game. That is for combat, and uh, yeah, it's a very deadly game. So. Uh, uh, you have to be careful. Magic. Uh, I like the way magic is put here. It's very clear. Uh, you have kind of common magic. You have powers. Uh, kind of a, a, a score called powers that will tell you how many magic points you have. And uh, you have the common magic, which uh, every spell uh, has a cost related to it. And you have to roll. You have divine magic when you are some kind of a priest, so uh, the, the, this magic is tied to your god. It will be uh, spells that your god may, may, may grant you. It's not, you don't have as much spells as in D&D. &D. You have spells very specific to what the gods want and uh, the the devotion and how the this, this the the skill is improved as a, as a priest will be how holy you are how true you are to the, your god's will and you will get better into doing this kind of spells by uh, by doing that by being true to your god and uh, they present here the, the spells uh, spells that is under a category called sorcery and this is very interesting every spell listed there, there don't have a cost uh, what do you do is that you choose how many points of power you put in the spell when you cast it and the, these points will manipulate uh, how the effects of the spell it may be how, how hard it, it will be uh, we'll just check for the, the table you can change the range, how uh, intense it will be, how long it will be, how many targets it will hit, uh, if you can combine more spells. So, uh, the, the, I really find this system interesting. I didn't tr really try it because uh, I used Legend for Elric Stormbreaker campaign and uh, for Elric. Uh, you have uh, in the Elric book you have a magic system that's tied to the setting. So I didn't try this kind of sorcery. For what I've read so far in forums or things like that, uh, it seems to be very powerful. 
So once again, you're in a very deadly game. So we have a game here that looks like lot lot alike basic role playing, and uh, the game in itself is very interesting. If you want something different from D and D but that has some crunch in it, uh, I highly recommend it. Uh, if you are a basic role playing fan and you'd like to have some alternative rules to put in your BRP campaign, it's it's possible to do that in Legend because the two game systems are so alike that it's very easy to swap the rules between the two. Um, okay, if you ask me a question, would you, what system would you choose to start a campaign between basic role-playing and Legend? Well, okay, my answer will be basic role-playing. Basic role-playing is uh, more simple uh, more flexible in some way uh, so uh, personally I have more experience with basic role playing so my preference goes there but I would take many rules from, from that to put into basic role playing but I could get gladly go with legend as it is because I do really like this system and by the way I've just checked out and the PDF of this book is still one dollar. You go on Drive Through Store, the link is below, and uh, you can have this book for one dollar, which is not uh, very expensive. It's not at all. So uh, it's very worth the look. For one dollar, you can have a whole game system. There's no monsters in there, and that's a uh, well. I wish we could have some. But the monster book in PDF is not very expensive too. It's kind of ten dollars. But uh, yeah, for one dollar, I guess you go buy this book and check it out because it has lots of good stuff. So I did want to make this review just before uh, I forgot about this game because uh, since a year I've been in other game systems. I play in the True Twenty campaign in the Pathfinder campaign. I'm game mastering some D6 system games and. Uh, and yes, I do many advanced fighting fantasy uh, games. So just before my the, the rules of these games go out of my mind and uh, be forgotten, I, I did want to make a review. So I hope you check it this out and uh, and uh, you you will enjoy the game. You can comment, like, subscribe. I will answer your questions. So my name is Francois Letap for JDRD30, and up to next time. I hope you have as much fun in your life as in your game.